west to the east, the north, and to the south of our country, the APC with their governors have been busy building a better life for Nigerians. The APC with their governors have built more roads, schools, bridges, hospitals, universities, and independent power plants, generated more internal revenue, and created more jobs than the rest of the Federation combined. Now, imagine what we could do when we are the federal government. Vote for change! Vote NBC! NBC! Change! Hello there and welcome to the News at 7 with me, Sabena Izuku. Niger military authorities saying ground troops are now fully in control of Meduguri and Konduga after an all-night battle with insurgents. Defense headquarters say through its Twitter feed that troops inflicted heavy casualty on Boko Haram members on the outskirts of the capital city. It also admitted that it lost some soldiers on the battle that stretched into the early hours of Monday. The military added that the ground and aerial patrol are on to keep the insurgents at bay. Members of the local vigilante, which backed the troops in the battle, are also weeding out insurgents who infiltrated the city. Members of the Federal Capital Territory in Bala Mohammed has branded Bauchi State Governor Isa Yuguda as an APC mole in the People's Democratic Party. He also wondered why the crowd, who threw stones at the podium during the President Goodluck Jonathan's recent campaign, did not stone the governor when he was making his pitch. The FCT minister said in uh, this in reaction to claims by the Bauchi state governor that he was the mastermind of the attack on the president's campaign team on Thursday last week. Speaking through his media aide, Nosike Uguengi, the minister noted Yuguda had now proved that he had been hobnobbing with all the progressive Congress. He also suggested in a statement issued in Abuja that Yuguda is a real godfather and sponsor of the IPC governorship candidate in the state. The FCT minister added that his problem with the governor began from the day he mobilized senators to invoke the doctrine of the necessity which paid way for the swearing-in of the then Vice President Jonathan as acting president. The chairman of the Independent National Electric Commission, Atahiru Jaga, has charged all 37 resident electric commissioners to remain focused on ensuring credible elections next month. He said this shortly before holding a closed-door meeting with electric commissioners in Abuja. Jaga implored them not to lose focus in the face of attempts by politicians to drive the commission into disrupt. I have said consistently what we need to do is to remain focused and to busy ourselves in terms of ensuring that the 2015 general elections are remarkably much better than the 2011 general uh, elections. And uh, we have to continue to ensure that whatever we do, uh, we remain impartial and nonpartisan, and that we create a level playing field for all parties, all candidates, and all contestants. Uh, we need to reassure Nigerians that we are ready to conduct free, fair, credible and peaceful elections uh, in the 2015 general elections. Uh, but we also need to reassure ourselves that indeed we are ready uh, for the business uh, ahead of us. The European Union plans to deploy 90 election observers to monitor next month's election in Nigeria. It will, however, not send any team to observe voting in the northeast due to security concerns. The head of the EU's election observation mission in Nigeria, Santiago Zazila, discloses at a meeting with the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, Mohamedou Buhari, in Abuja. The EU team held a closed-door meeting with the leadership of the IPC Presidential Campaign Council before the brief on the outcome. The electoral mission is a big mission. It's a mission that starts in November and it will be in place until mid-April. Then it's not only 
uh, the problem, what happened on the electoral day, is what happened during all the big space of time. How the primaries has been done, uh, how it respected the law, how respected, I will say, the uh, propaganda, the media, and also afterwards any possible claim after elections. And that is our role, not just to follow up the day of election. It will be impossible in a country so big with so many inhabitants as has uh, Nigeria to cover everything. And I can tell you that we are the mission more important, the biggest mission that there is in all the world for this election and for any other election. And for the Northeast, of course, we can't be there for security reasons, obvious security reasons. But anyhow, we have people deployed very close to the Northeast, and we have contacts there on this area, and then we try to have the better information as we can have on the Northeast but the present situation don't allow us to go to the Northeast. They have been covering other countries' elections, although not uh, exactly similar to our own country. Uh, they are very experienced people. They are qualified to come for this supervision. And uh, as you observe, they cannot cover all the 120 or 150,000 polling units, but they have placed people in strategic places to advise them. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry says the United States is ready to go further to help Nigeria defeat Boko Haram militants. John Kerry, who met President Goodluck Jonathan and his main rival to the 14th February presidential election, also pledged Washington's continued support for Nigerians' counterinsurgency efforts. He spoke to newsmen at the U.S. consulate in Lagos after a closed-door meeting with President Goodluck Jonathan and a meeting with Mohamedou Buhari who spoke on the campaigning for the elections. We were and um, we finished the South South, six states. We finished South East, five states. We have to take a couple of meetings by day to go to the country. So we go to Turkey and yesterday we did... Um, Absolutely critical that these elections be conducted peacefully that they are credible, transparent, accountable, so that the people of Nigeria can have faith and the world can have faith in the government that flows from it. The international community is paying very close attention uh, to this election uh, and that the international community is deeply committed to working with Nigerians going forward with the hopes uh, that uh, they will have an election that is free of violence uh, and capable of instilling confidence in the future. We will absolutely continue to support the Nigerian military in its fight against Boko Haram. The desire of the United States to be able to engage even more so in the effort to push back against Boko Haram or any other violent extremist group, but the quality of the democratic process is important to contributing to our ability to do so. And that's exactly why I'm here today. And away from that, the group which identifies itself as Evo's Diaspora Initiative for Buhari has dissociated himself from the claims that Eze Indibos in northern Nigeria has endorsed President Goodluck Jonathan for a second term. Members of the group maintain that the suggestion was made by people they described as political mentions who see politics as a means of the selfish ends. Addressing journalists in Abuja, the group led by its national vice chairman, Obiora Anoura, however, disclosed that it is backing the All Progressive Congress and its presidential candidate, Mohamedou Buhari. We urge all the Igbos, wherever they find themselves, to integrate with their host communities and to refuse to be headed by greedy and rogue individuals who masquerade as monarchs where they have no state to territory or subjects. They are simply put, imposters. We call on, on, on all public to discuss such unman unmandated statements from political merchants as we pray for change in all ramifications come February 2015.
The People's Democratic Party says it is ready for the February general elections. Deputy National Publicity Secretary of the party, Ibrahim Jalou, insisted that the ruling party is not behind the calls for the shifting of the elections. Jalou says since the party has yet to release a statement on the call for the postponement, it will be wrong to assume that the party is not ready for the February 14th presidential elections and are coming up after that date. The National Security Advisor Sambo Dasuki recently asked the Independent National Electric Commission to shift the election by at least one month. The All Progressive Congress has alleged that the ruling PDP was not ready for the election and was looking for the extensions to show off the image of its presidential candidate, President Gunlok Jonathan. Jalo, though, denies the allegations, saying the ruling party was seriously preparing for the elections. Also, the National Publicity Secretary of the party, Olisa Metu, in a statement says the party is ready for the elections. Well, as the calls for the postponement of the general elections and the encounter calls grows louder, a member of the House of Representatives and the APC candidate for the Lagos West Senatorial seat, Solomon Adiola, and the chairman of the All Progressive Congress in Lagos State, Henry Ajumali, says the election must hold. They presented that it is nothing but a sign of desperation, the calls for the shifting of elections, calling for the distribution of the PVCs, that the permanent voters call to be extended till the day before the general elections. We have known about this over two years ago, the plan to postpone election. It is impossible. It can never be done. A, a date has been given. International society knew when Nigeria is going to. All Nigerians in the hospital knew the time. All Nigerians are aware. Whatever it takes, let's go ahead and do that election. All I can say is this. Nigeria is not in support of postponement. So we, the representative of the people, are not in support of postponement. This election has been fixed February 14 and February 28, and it's a date with destiny. Nigeria is in their need of change, and we cannot wait a day longer than what we have experienced within the last four years. So February 14, on Abudu we stand. We are not supporting postponement in any form, in any manner. We in the House of Reps, and even in the Senate, I know no one of us will support the movement of this particular election. And away from that, the All Progressive Congress says it has instructed its lawyers to challenge the shutdown of some fundraising platform by the National Communication Commission. The governor of Lagos State, Babatunde Fashola, disclosed this at a meeting of the fundraising directorate of the APC Presidential Council in Abuja on Sunday. He said the party is left with no choice but to seek legal redress of an action he argued was clearly a breach of constitutional provisions and a clear case of double standards. Fashola recalled that in 2010, Approval was given to the Jonathan Sambo campaign organization to raise funds using a platform, but the ABC was being denied the same right in 2015. Fashala, who is the director of Buhari Oshibajo's campaign fund, also explained to the gathering that the fundraising platform, which included the sale of scratch cards and donations into the designated first bank account, still subsists. He said though the platform was established when Buhari was still seeking the party's nomination as flag bearer, it is still up and running and supporters could still donate. We'll go for commercial and when we return there will be more stories for you. Do stay with us. There comes a moment when my heart must choose On this great path I've chosen like a house that is a home Sometimes I feel like it's not enough And I know that we can't give up You were me to be all I can be Now nothing can stop me I believe Lagos is a place where I can achieve my full potential I believe together we can build the Lagos of our dreams. I am Akimu Miyambo. Vote Akimu 
Ambode for Governor of Lagos State. Welcome back to the news. For more information, you can reach us on our social media platform, and that's on facebook.com forward slash Paul TV News. And on Twitter, at Paul TV News NG. For news updates and other programs, you can join us on our youtube.com forward slash Paul TV Club Spice in the news. As a shutdown to the general elections continue, political activities have also gathered momentum. In Imo State, the contest for who occupies the state government house is building up as incumbent governor Rochas Okorocha for of the All Progressive Congress and his PDP rival Emeka Ihedioha canvasses for supporters' vote. Ajibade Awufeso completes the rest of the story. In Imo State, the battle as for the governorship seats for the next occupant of the popular Douglas House between the APC and the PDP has gotten fiercer. The incumbent governor, Rochas Okorocha, who is seen by the people as a performer, wants to have another shot, having lost the party's presidential primaries to Mohamed Buhari. PDP flag bearer Emeka Ihedioha has taken his campaign to be the next governor of the state to the next level, with rallies across the state. Ibitolu and Okigwe local government, where the recent local government visited. There, he promised to empower the people. He added that he will do better than the present government. Some residents who took part in the rally gave their impressions of the candidates. We believe that the government has not been accountable and the government we have today has not been prudent with our resources. We believe that the new government of PDP on the and away from there, the Minister of Works, Michael Nolimeme, has challenged Governor Adam Soshomale of Edo State to pay up his counterpart fund under the Universal Basic Education, UBE, program in order to access 2 billion naira meant to revamp both the primary and secondary schools infrastructures across the state. Makanola Meme threw this challenge at the PDP campaign mega rally in Urumi in Essen, southeast local government area of the state. Addressing the large crowd at the PDP rally, where all the parties told words were in attendance, the minister used the occasion to restate the many achievements of President Gilok Jonathan in Edo State. Chairman of the party, Mr. Bruce President, I have done a lot for you, not only on infrastructure, but also in terms of staff development, staff training, and all that. So, we challenge the state government to pay their matching grant so that they'll be able to deliver democratic dividends that is flowing from the federal government to the good people of Edo State. When I say yes, it is yes. And I want to say this clearly. Don't be deceived. If somebody tells you Jonathan will not win, that person is sick. And away from that, the Indibo Cultural Society of Nigeria has won all progressive congress of an impending loss of legal state as a result of his incessant criticism of President Gilok Jonathan. This, according to the group, is because the majority of the South East and South South people are firmly behind the re-election bid of the president. It said in a statement signed by Udo Uduel Garanya that people of the Igbo ethnicity are a dominant bloc of voters in Lagos and would not tolerate the manner APC is ridiculing President Gulag Jonathan. The Indigo Cultural Society of Nigeria argued that only local government uh, party can easily win in Lagos without evil support is Agege. And away from that, the judicial workers have partially called off their three-week-long uh, strike after a National Executive Council meeting in Abuja. 
The leadership of the judicial staff unit of Nigeria have consequently directed their members at federal level to resume work with effect from Monday. The Johnson uh, President Adamu Mawa said the decision was part of the concession by the union to prove that the strike was not political. The counterparts in the state judiciary across the country are, however, to await the outcome of a meeting of Johnson officials with stakeholders later today. President of the Nigerian Bar Association, the Forum of Court, Chief Registrar, body of the state attorney general is expected at the meeting. The growth of the judicial workers is reluctance of some state governors to grant autonomy to the judiciary. We'll just take another commercial and when we return, it will be outside Nigeria to stay with us. I believe in Lagos. I believe in opportunities. I believe in youth empowerment, Jare. I believe in big business. I believe Lagos is incredible. Together, we can build the Lagos of our dreams. I am Akimu Miyambo. for governor of Lagos State. Welcome back. In outside Nigeria, a Turkish court has ordered Facebook to block a number of pages deemed insulting to the Prophet Muhammad, threatening to stop access to the whole social networking site if it does not comply. The order made by the court on Sunday followed a request by a prosecutor. It was the latest move to crack down on material sin as offending religious sensibilities in the largely Muslim nation, where the government of President Tayyip Erdogan is seen pursuing an Islamist leaning agenda. Earlier this month, prosecutors launched an inquiry into a newspaper which reprinted parts of the French satirical weekly Charlie Hebdo in the wake of an attack by Islamic militants on its offices in Paris. And that wraps up the news at 7. Don't forget to keep us today with us at 9.45 p.m. That's our prime time news. For me and the news crew, we say many thanks. I am Sabana Izuki, and thank you very much indeed for watching.